I ain't playing, got a weird mind If you work eight hours, I'ma work nine If the shoot tastes sour, you should taste mine I'ma stay in power for a long time Get up, nah, I ain't a quitter Toss me the ball, I'm a really big hitter Big picture, I'm a straight killer Rising the song to the highest bidder Got juice, got gas, I'm Hello again, Uncle Charles Wallenkrim back with another video dealing with marriage advice, marriage advice with biology, biology. This is a, this is a big one that I want to talk about. And that is physical fitness. Physical fitness will keep you married. Physical fitness will keep you married. And I don't mean just you, your wife needs to be on point with that too. There are so many examples of how physical fitness is beneficial, but so many people completely disregard it. It is extremely beneficial, especially, especially in today's society. A, the, a lot of times are the biggest reasons why our society is in the problems that we're having now. We're having some serious problems. If you didn't know, this is probably the one of the worst times in United States history. However, we're in, in a situation where we're not hungry, we're not in a famine, we're not, we're not having a hard time uh, getting water, we're not in the middle of a war. But how we feel about ourselves as Americans is, is extremely low, extremely low. And that starts why, where? From the beginning, the family in itself. Too many people are not in a family. And that's why I'm doing this video. I don't, as you see how many views these videos get, they don't get a lot of views. It's, YouTube doesn't want the, this algorithm to persist, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And I wanna help you out. And physical fitness is so big. Get out there and exercise. If you're married and you're not exercising regularly, exercise regularly. If you're exercising regularly, here's the big thing. A lot of people exercise regularly and they're just going through the motions. You have to have some type of vigorous exercise. If you want to just walk, you need to add something to that walk. Wear weights, wear a weight vest. If you're, if you're running, put some sprints in there and both need to do that. The wife and the husband. Now I myself have a very difficult time working out with my wife. My wife, just she and I just don't come eye to eye with that. And I envy so many people who work out with their spouse. I think that is awesome. And if you can do it, that is, that is a true sign that you're going to stay married for a long time. If you got to work out, if you work out individually, fine. If you, if you work out together, even better, but you have to, and you have to give yourself, you got to sweat and you got to go through a little bit of pain because this world is so easy for us in the United States. That's the problem. You gotta give yourself a little bit of, of, of a challenge. And give yourself a little challenge in the morning, in the afternoon after work, which is harder, honestly. I think you should go in the morning if you can. Challenge yourself at the gym and you will be in a better place emotionally in a better place, mentally in a better place, and of course, physically in a better place. Now, here's another thing with, uh, I would say, physical fitness. If your lady gains too much weight too fast, it is not one thing that's wrong, and you're not wrong for not liking it. We're, we, we got this bullshit body positivity movement which is just another, another means of control, another means to keep you from achieving anything that you want to achieve or the things you want to achieve in life. This body positivity is absolutely, it's honestly, it's evil. It's not people who are in shape but don't have the cookie cutter uh, bodies or somebody who's in shape but doesn't have a six pack it's not that the body type positivity is actually people who are well overweight people who are clinically obese and we're telling each other that oh that's fine but see what is missing what people don't want to hear or people want to 
forget about. What if you want to stay with your person for the rest of your life? What, have a person that is going to get overweight, becomes overweight, they get serious health problems. So serious health problems, they're, they cost money. And one of the things that, it's, it's two things that would destroy a marriage, that, that are destructive to a marriage that go wrong most of the time. Sex and economics. Sex and economics. If you don't know how to handle your money, it's going to go bad. If you're not having enough sex, you have sex with the wrong person, and also including, honestly, too many kids, it's going to go bad. Being overweight will affect both of those things, especially when it comes to taking care of yourself financially, when you have to take care of yourself medically. Knees get shot, backs go out. You got to get a, a um, hover around and you can't move about. You, you, you're not happy when you're not mobile. You're not happy when, you, when you're stuck in one place and you can't move around. You know, you can't go out and smell the roses because you're stuck. You, you need help or you may not be able to help them. Another thing that people don't get and which is lost, and I talked about this slightly before, when a man really turns a woman on, he can manhandle her. He can pick her up and throw her across the room. It's a turn on to play fight with your spouse. When a woman knows her man can uh, uh, physically control her at any time if he wants to. It's an actual turn on. You can't do that when they get too big. You can't even play. Even if you could pick her big ass up and throw her across the room onto the bed, you're going to break the bed. Um, it's, it's funny or it's something to laugh at, but it's the tr truth. It's the absolute truth. You got, you got to maintain. She has to maintain that weight. And what's the number one way a, a man can make sure a woman maintains her weight? He needs to maintain his weight. Again, I'll bring this up. If you want to be a husband, you're a leader. And you got to lead by example. So one of my big things is I don't just tell you what's wrong. I tell you answers. My big thing is telling you answers. I want to go at the root of the problem and I want to give you some answers. So I'll, I'm going to give you some answers here. Cooking on your own, cooking for yourself. Cooking for yourself makes a big difference. It makes a humongous difference. And I can't go too deep into all the things that I do, but I cook most of the meals. I, I'm a culinary, I'm a former culinary student. I have a degree in culinary arts and all those things. So I naturally do most of the cooking just because it's not even an argument who's better. I'm, I'm probably the best cook or whatever in my city, maybe in my town, not even exaggerating. I know I can. Um, but cooking for yourself changes a lot. When, you, when you're eating out, when you're eating out, it actually is damaging to you. Here, I'll give you this, this, this small example, and I'll, I'll move to the next, uh, next part of uh, health and everything else. When I, when I used to work in, in the food industry, when I worked in met restaurants, you, you get to deal with the maintenance of working in the restaurant. So at the end of the night, we have to clean up and everything else. And a lot of times we recycle the oil. Now, you might think recycling the oil from all day, frying the same thing, frying the same thing. Maybe that's gross. That's not gross. The reality of it is what is gross or what's sad and what is happening when you're eating certain food, especially fried fast food or fried food out that you didn't make is the oil that they use. The oil that is used in restaurants is designed not to break down and you're ingesting that into your system and it's not breaking down. You may have seen it before people with big, huge guts that aren't you wouldn't say like terribly fat, but they have big guts. What is that? That's 
unprocessed food, undigested food sitting and staying in your gut. And one of the things that does that is th are things that don't break down in your system and get stuck there. And that's a big proponent. You will never see a person, even if they're overweight, they won't have that big gut that looks like they're pregnant if they're eating properly. Eating properly would do it. All right, the last thing I want to go over, and, and you have to keep this in mind too, is not just eating properly because a lot of times you can't get enough nutrients in the food you get, eat, and also eating properly can be expensive. So you can't go out and eat 100% organic. If you eat 100% organic, it, it's going to be way too expensive. And a lot of times, 100% organic isn't going to get you where you need to. Also, I like to shop at, at um, the farmer's market. I would love to talk about the farmer's market as a whole, but I don't want to get too deep or too long-winded in this video. And a lot of times what you're going to have to do is take in additional vitamins. you got to take supplements. In today, this day and age, it is so easy to take these supp supplements now. I, have, I eat gummies. I eat uh, a multivitamin gummy. I eat zinc. I eat magnesium. Uh, I eat, uh, and I eat, so that's the thing. You're, when you're chewing it, you're eating it. I'm just not taking it. I eat all kinds of different, uh, uh, I eat um, omega-3s. I take those things in. Vitamin D, God, vitamin D is huge. You got to get vitamin D. I take those additional supplements because we are missing what we're not allowed to have or we're not being given because of the way we're, we're growing our food. If you watch any, any documentary, one of the best documentaries I've seen recently about food is Super Size Me 2. If you haven't seen Super Size Me 2, it's on YouTube. It's no excuse. Check out Super Size Me 2. But we're not growing, really growing animals and growing our vegetables correctly. And we're not going to get the proper nutrients. So if you're not getting the proper nutrients, that's going to affect you too. And then if you're doing all these things, or not doing all these things, it's going to affect your relationships. It's going to affect your decision making. It's going to affect how you feel. If you're feeling lazy, your spouse will get mad at you. If you're not very, you're, you're, you're grumpy and, and, and easily pissed off, your spouse is going to get mad at you. You're going to be mad at your spouse all the time. But if you're happy because you're feeling good, you're, you're able to walk around. You're able to enjoy life. It's real easy to have a good relationship with your spouse. And being healthy is so, so important. And it's a big, big part of that. It will affect, it will affect your sex. It will affect your finances. I'm Uncle Charles Wallingford. I'm just here to help.